Hey folks, I hope everyone is doing well, um, staying safe. It was good to hear from many of you on Flipgrid. I invite those of you who didn't participate to do so this week, um, just at least to yeah keep some community. Uh, I assume that you all got my email, but just a reminder that I finished giving feedback on all the proposals. Let me know if you have questions or want further feedback on it. Um, I'm happy to, to try to meet with folks. Um, I apologize. Uh, that it's been pretty hectic here. I mean, I think we all are just gonna have to continue to, to give each other um, lots of compassion. Uh, today, I'm gonna try a different approach for the lecture. Um, I don't think I have anything else that I had to announce or anything for slides. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is just go through this notebook. I try to be a little bit more verbose in it. Um, instead of creating slides, I try to put most of the content into the, into the notebook and I'm also gonna uh, try to go through and explain some of what's going on uh, with the notebook. I also adjusted the uh, volume so that I'm recording from my computer's microphone. I also bought a microphone that should be here in a few days, so hopefully these videos will continue to improve in sound quality. Apologies that the last one was pretty quiet. So, okay, let's get going with text analysis in Python. Um, I mentioned before this is uh, certainly not my forte. I've, I've done a little bit of text analysis, um, and so there are other places that you should go. Um, another kind of caveat, you know, we're moving from um, kind of the basics of learning a programming language into the specifics of how to do some specific things. And so uh, I'll, there's, it's a pretty big jump to do that. And so there's, there may be a lot going on, especially as we use some of these fancier libraries that is difficult to parse or to understand. Um, and you may, if you want to to use some of these text analysis techniques, you're gonna to need to do some extra work in kind of figuring out what's going on um, in order to get them to work. Okay, um, so that being said, uh, this is, I'm gonna just restart it so that we are using all the data from the beginning. Um, this is the, this will be up, hopefully by the time this video is up. Uh, this is um, an IPython notebook that goes through an introduction to text analysis. I, I'm using, uh, three data that comes from three subreddits on Reddit. Um, if you're not a a familiar with Reddit, it's kind of a group of smaller forums. And so the three that I'm taking are Ask Reddit, where people can uh, ask each other questions. Uh, coronavirus, which is around conversation and news around coronavirus. And politics, which is obviously news and conversation around politics. And so uh, this code I used to create a data set, which I also uploaded, and which I'll show you in a second how to load. You could, I, I included this code here so that you could see another example of kind of how to get data from an API. Um, and if you wanted to, if you want to, you know, gather um, Reddit data, this is a pretty good way to do it. And this is sort of an, an initial um, attempt at it, uh, or a, a, kind of some initial code that you could use. Um, but I, what I recommend is you just ignore that code up there and skip to, to this one and load this. Um, what this will do is grab the CSV file, which I created, and put there. And the one thing that, that you'll need to do, um, maybe there's a better way to do this, but uh, I have found that uh, dates in pandas don't transfer really nicely when you're moving from CSV uh, back to pandas. And so uh, we just get create changes back into a date time and put it in the index so that we can do some time things with it. We'll just make sure that worked, it looks good. So uh, this is what the data looks like. It includes a date, which is the index now, um, title text, self text, which there isn't much self text in these three subreddits. In some subreddits, this is much more common, but basically um, subreddits can have a title and then they can also have you know, kind of more explanatory text. Ask Reddit, I believe, doesn't even allow that. So that's why these are all missing. Um, and then the date, this is duplicated. So this is just the column we used there. Okay, so that is the data. Um, and I'm gonna talk about a few different things we could do with this data. Um, kind of text analysis approaches. There's some that are really easy that, well, relatively easy that you could do with the tools that you have without loading any extra libraries. So for example, if we wanted to look at uh, the prevalence of posts that include uh, terms about coronavirus, COVID-19, coronavirus in Wuhan, uh, we can do that. So what this um, code here does is first, if you, this is 
the same as our other one with matplotlib. We create a, a column just full of ones um, because each row in the data frame represents a one, represents one post. And so, um, so we do that so that we can sum over days or over weeks or however we want to do it. Um, and so um, what we do is for each term, we create a temporary data frame where that term appears either in the title or in the self text. So uh, if, it, if it appears in the title or, this is the or operator, this uh, um, pipe it's called, then we keep it. So then we, we keep that row. Um, and so we create this temporary data frame and then we create a summary based of that data frame by day. So if you remember this resample, uh, it takes a data frame which has the index that has uh, date time objects and resamples it. So we're doing it by day and then we're going to resample the, the, that number of posts, which is just one, and we're going to do the sum of those. So it's the sum of the posts per day that include a given term. So for the first term, it'll be that include COVID-19, uh, and then we're going to plot it. We'll create a, we'll plot it, and we'll give it a, the label of the term. So the first one's going to be labeled COVID-19. Um, and the reason we do this is so that when we create the legend, so after this for loop is done running, we create a legend, and the legend uses these labels. So uh, we need to get the plot has to have a label and, it, and then matplotlib is smart enough to know how to use those labels to create a legend and we show it. So this shows how the prevalence of each of those uh, terms has changed over time from March 11th to the 25th. Um, just kind of FYI, uh, this is an artifact of how we created, how we created the data. Uh, we didn't have all of the 25th. Um, and it's, I mean, it's worth mentioning, and for our purposes today, it's not that important, but it's worth mentioning that dates are particularly tricky. Um, for example, this, we know that the column is called created UTC, or the, when the API returns it as created UTC. So this is uh, in UTC time, universal time, Greenwich time. Um, but somewhere along the way, so if we look here, like, we're seeing some, it should have ended at midnight on the 25th, you know, right as the 25th began. But you can see that some of these, it actually ends four hours after midnight. So this is the very first uh, item. It goes in descending from uh, date and then a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier. Um, and so we can see that we're actually, something is fishy here. So I don't know, um, somewhere along the line, we kind of, there's a, a mismatch between the date we thought we were getting and the date we got. So, um, I mean, probably if anyone wants to try to figure out this bug, my guess is, is it's, it's right here when we changed from uh, the, the dates that were given to us by um, by the API into a date time. Anyway, it's something to, to keep track of. The bane of programmers' existence is, is uh, time zones, like figuring out time zones and you know, whether the time that you've got is corrected for time zones or not corrected and how to correct it when you display it or whether to correct it, it's, it's a pain. And so some of that, something of that is going on here. And so I don't know, for example, is this our time zone? Is this Greenwich Mean Time? What is this referring to, et cetera? And so um, it may be worth figuring that out. Um, but in our case, it's probably not, uh, you know, we. For now, we're just trying to kind of get a, a general idea, general sense of how this is going, and that's just fine. We can just ignore the 25th. Okay, but it's, I thought it was worth kind of discussing that concept. Okay, the second, uh, after that, uh, as an exercise for you, I, I've included a few exercises. Do whichever ones uh, are interesting to you. This is maybe the easiest one. It's really just a plotting exercise. So instead of this is organized by term. See if you can figure out how to organize it by subreddit so that you look at, instead of these lines representing terms, they represent the three different subreddits and each line is how often coronavirus is used in those subreddits. Okay, so that's the, the first approach is kind of summarizing terms. Uh, a related one is dictionary based. The, um, there is an approach, a, I guess, I don't know what you call it, toolkit called Luke, L-I-W-C linguistic inquiry and word count, um, which is kind of a set of dictionaries built by psychologists and linguists um, that are supposed to represent mostly psychological constructs. Um, uh, you have to pay to use it. I've never, I've never actually used Luke, but it's quite common in communication. 
I think it's even more common in psychology. Um, but the, the idea is that there's kind of the set of words that's associated with things you might be interested in uh, or that represents things you might be interested in, such as like self-referential words, for example. Um, and you look at how often they appear and especially like how often they appear in one set of texts versus another set of texts. Um, you can recreate that if there are things that you might like to do. Um, so you could, for example, build a sentiment dictionary this way that you could take a subset of the text that you're interested in code them for positive or negative sentiment and look for words that are associated with positive sentiment in your corpus um, versus negative sentiment. Um, and then and then take that dictionary, that set of words, and apply it to the entire corpus and look at how, how common they are. Um, and so this shows one way to do that with he and his. Um, so this first set of code I, is kind of actually fixing a bug in that. So I, I want for this for this and for a lot of the future ones to look at both the self text and the uh, title text. And so what I my goal is to create this new column called all text, which is just the title text plus the self text with a space in between um, so that it, it, the two words don't jut up against each other. Um, and so what this first line does is it actually is looking for um, portions of self text that are uh, that I don't want to keep. Um, and so this includes in a so if it's missing, or if it is uh, either removed or deleted, this is how that's represented in the text if if um, if the post was removed, or the text was removed or deleted, then it appears like this. And so I'm looking for anywhere that that occurred uh, in the column self text and replacing it with empty string. So that that which allows me you can't you can't append none to a string. So the title is a string, and if this was none, then uh, we couldn't append them, and we would get an error. And so this lets us uh, append them, append an empty string to the title string. Uh, and if, uh, if we look at the head, we can see that all text, in this case, just equals the title because self text is now all empty strings. So that's, the, that's what we did just to kind of prep this. And then what we do is I created a very small dictionary. I mean, in, in this this case, they, there's some term overloading going on here because it's not a dictionary in the Python sense. Uh, it's just a dictionary in more like the literal dictionary sense. A, a set of words associated with the construct I'm interested in, which is male words, a set associated with female words, so he and his and she and hers, uh, and then look for how often they appear in the subreddits I'm interested in. So uh, what we do is I'm creating this new uh, grouped text uh, data frame, which I take the subreddit, or take the data from the original data frame, group it by subreddit, get just the all text columns, and then apply this function to each of the uh, columns. And so what this does is it takes uh, all of the text from all text, it joins it, um, so it, it Combines all of the uh, the text and then and then puts it into um, a list. So it's a list of all the words that appear in each subreddit. That's what we end up with. So it'll be three um, lists of humongous lists of words, basically. Um, how often they appear in each each post from the subreddits, and then we can aggregate it. We can aggregate based on uh, each of those. And so what we do is, uh, here, in fact, I'll show you, let's let's run this, uh, and I'll show you what root text looks like. Uh, so it's each subreddit, and then uh, a list of all the words that appeared in each one. And then we aggregate those uh, lists. So the male ratio is, uh, I should have called that something else. Um, let's just call it ag. So with that, I'm just saying so we don't use x in both places here. So the, the mail ratio, again, we apply this function. It's called a lambda function. It's it's basically a function that you it just appears and exists in that one place. You don't actually define it. Um, and it, you say what it takes in, what the parameters are, is x. Uh, and x, in this case, is a, a group. So it's this list. It's basically this list is what it's taking in, and then we're going to return 
uh, the sum of uh, x dot count y for y in male words. So we're going to make a list of how often um, each of the words appears. So it's going to this is going to give us something like he appears five thousand times in this list of words, and his appears. 100 times. And so it'll sum that into 5,100 and then divide it by how many total words there are. So that's the male ratio is how, how, what proportion of all words are these two male words and female ratio, what proportion of all words are those female words. So we create those two aggregate measures and then we plot uh, those measures and this tells us how to do it. So uh, x the, is the index y is total value. So these these two both come from matplotlib. These are, are kind of uh, strings that matplotlib has that tells it what to do. And same with the kind equals a bar chart. Um, and so the matplotlib uh, documentation is how you figure that out. And then uh, and then we show the plot. And so these are kind of, you know, obviously really ugly labels um, that could be fixed. In fact, that's kind of your uh, job is to, to make this look a little bit better. So, but what this means, the Y is how the proportion of all um, text in each subreddit that includes, for example, male words and ask Reddit. So it's about uh, one tenth of 1% of all words uh, and all the way up to half of 1% in politics. And female words are much rarer in all three. Okay, so those are the that's kind of a really simple way of, of doing a dictionary based approach to aggregating these sorts of things. Um, and for the exercise I gave you to uh, figure out if you could fix this. So instead of being uh, grouped, you know, ask Reddit coronavirus politics, we could compare a little bit easier. So ask Reddit and then the other female ask Reddit is right next to it. Coronavirus, coronavirus is next to it. I actually don't know how to do this, and so <laughs> that's why I gave it to you as an exercise. Um, and then a second exercise, if you'd like, is to do this for another set of terms. See if you can figure out something else that you think would be interesting to look at, to compare these. Okay, um, so that is, um, yeah, so that's kind of some basic summarization. The next one thing I wanted to talk about is TF-IDF. Um, I, I also give a link. You can use Luke. You can use do kind of more complicated things um, if you have access to, to Luke or if you were willing to pay for it. Um, all of these, including the ones we've done now, are based on something that's called a bag of words, which is basically what we did where we created this list. Um, this is just a list. You know, it's not each word has no relationship in our analysis to the word before or the word after. Um, it's just that's what they call like a bag of words. You take everything, you shove it in a big bag. And then you pull out the ones you're interested in and count them or something, um, and and we are going to use and that's very common in most NLP applications. Um, it's kind of ignoring context, but it, it works pretty well. Um, so, I, another thing we might want to do is to is to compare which words appear most commonly in each of these uh, corpuses, and the, the naive the naive way would just be to try to compare, like to count. You know, how often does each word appear? And the problem with that approach is that it would you'd end up with the being the most common and of and you know things like that. And so uh, the smarter uh, way to do it uh, is something called TFIDF or term frequency inverse document frequency. Um, the basic idea is that for each corpus is kind of each document they call it is compared with other documents. And so um, the more often a term appears uh, in a document, but the more the more it appears within one document and the less often it appears in other documents, the higher its TF-IDF score for that document. Um, and so there are, uh, there's kind of some nice explanations, but that's the, the basic idea is it normalizes words based on how often they appear across groups of texts across or across uh, documents is a way to think of it. Um, and so for this, we want to compare um, the subreddits. That's the unit of analysis that we're most interested in. Um, and so there are, there are a bunch of ways to do TFIDF, to do other kinds of NLP and text analysis. Uh, I have used scikit-learn the most. 
this is a machine learning library, um, but I give uh, kind of, these are kind of the most common, NLTK, Spacey, text blob, uh, are all other approaches uh, that have different, kind of different things that they're good at. Um, and I'll, we'll actually use um, NLTK, I think, in a second. But here's how you do it in uh, scikit-learn. So sklearn is the name of the library. Um, this is a function that kind of creates TFIDF, um, and we're going to do it so we just get the, the top 5,000 most used words. Excuse me. And uh, what we'll need, so we're taking this grouped text, which looks like this, and I want to change it from this series into a list, basically. And so, and I'm actually also going to change it. Uh, sklearn is expecting this as uh, strings instead of as lists of words. And so I'm changing it back into strings. So this is now a list of strings. So each string is all the text from a given subreddit um, from all those posts. Uh, and so we um, do all this, which basically I kind of stole from a tutorial around this, but it will fit this uh, and transform it. So this is the, really the TFIDF result. Um, and then the rest of it just makes it look better. So you get the feature names back. I actually don't even know what this part does. Um, I really just took it from a tutorial, um, but it looked like it, wor it worked. Uh, so um, we create this new data frame and then Oh, what? Oh, it's because I never... So each of the column names uh, by default is just 0, 1, and 2. Um, and what I had done is I took it from this, but I haven't run this yet. So let's just go like this. Okay, sorry. So there's our column names. And then we will look, and you can just sort by which one you're most interested in. So coronavirus, unsurprisingly, 19 is the, so this is, my assumption is this is COVID-19 is where this 19 comes from. Um, and then it has all of these other, I honestly have no idea about where some of these are coming from, but let's see. Let's, if we look at politics and the most common terms, TFIDF, uh, Trump, Gov, Surprisingly, Chinese virus and coronavirus are actually more common. Oh, it's okay. It's still more common. Still, it's higher TFIDF in coronavirus, but it's high in politics still, as compared to Ask Reddit, which doesn't care as much about coronavirus. Um, oh yeah, and these are the lowest. That's why they're down here. Okay. Um, let's do that. Head twenty. Um, so there we go. So we can see these are the ones that are most common in. Uh, ask Reddit, it would probably be, oops, in politics, sorry, it would probably be wise to try to, you know, you could remove some of these um, on your own. Uh, it's obviously breaking up websites. Links are probably more common in politics than in other words, and so we get a bunch of these that look like that. So, uh, so that's the big idea here. Um, behind this, uh, so that's, yeah, that's TFIDF. And so you see we don't get things like the and of um, like we would if we if we didn't do it. It really is quite good as, as a kind of pretty easy way to, um, to get the most useful terms in identifying uh, a group of texts compared to others. Okay, so that's TFIDF and it actually gets used for other things as well. It, it goes into uh, topic modeling, for example, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so the, the next thing I wanna talk about is classification. So uh, classification more broad, like broadly speaking is a, a term used from machine learning um, and specifically supervised machine learning where you have a set of classes that each item is associated with. Um, and it's called supervised because you start with a set where you know the answer. Um, so sentiment analysis is a great example of this. Um, other things could include, uh, you know, things like where a text comes from. So, for example, in our case, we know which subreddit something comes from. Uh, that could we could use that to train a model that predicts, you know, given an, a, a title, what uh, subreddit did it come from. So we could do something like that. Um, 
there's yeah, but but the big idea is that this is a machine learning approach, and so there are lots of different approaches to machine learning. Um, but you, uh, um, yeah, but and you could use any one that you wanted. But the the main idea is you need this training set or training data, it's called, where you already know the answer, um, and and then you train something on it. Uh, I show you how to do sentiment anal sentiment analysis here instead of trying to show you kind of a more general machine learning approach. Um, if anyone's interested in doing a, a you know, kind of straight machine learning approach to this, I'm happy to help with that as well. But NLTK has a pre-trained classifier, trained on social media data called Vader. So that's similar enough to what we're doing that I think it's worth, uh, there. so I chose to use that and show you how to use that. The one thing about NLTK is that it doesn't include everything that you need um, because these lexicons and some of the other tools are so big that the by default NLTK that is installed with Anaconda is just kind of the base and you then you have to download it yourself. So you'll have to run this to download the Vader lexicon. Um, I've already run it so I think it should work. And then this, it's really pretty straight, straightforward. You import the sentiment intensity anal analyzer um, and then you can get this analyzer.polarity scores. It includes actually three, four scores, uh, neutral, negative, positive, and then a compound score, um, which as I understand it, at least I hope this is right, this sort of the kind of if you want a summary score. Um, and so that's what I grabbed. Uh, and then I use this apply again. So I create a new column in, the, in our data frame called sentiment, which takes the alt text and applies get sentiment to it. So that's uh, that's what we're doing here. And then I'll show you kind of the top sentiment scores. I looked at a few of the most negative ones and they were, uh, I, let's just say I don't recommend it. Um, so this is, uh, these are the most positive. So something about a, um, Surgeon helping with coronavirus. This one talks about heaven. So it seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. I don't know too much about Vader, how well it works, uh, but I saw a few things online that, that seemed like it, it worked okay. So this might be something that I know a number of you are interested in doing some analysis. So this could be something that would be useful for you. Okay. Finally, I'm going to show an example of topic modeling. Um, this I kind of built on something that I did for a, a book chapter, uh, which is linked here. Um, but the basic idea of topic modeling is you're trying to create a set. It's really, it takes a bit of, of doing to understand it, but you're trying to create a set of topics, which is word distributions, uh, kind of the likelihood of a word being used, and a set of, uh, of so distributions of words per, over topics and topics over documents. So each document, it's kind of, it. You can imagine it as trying to figure out the best way that if a document was created from a set of topics and those topics were made of words and each so each document is kind of a mix of topics and each topic is a mix of words what would be the ideal kind of mix that would predict the actual documents that you see so that's what it's trying to do i know that's it's a bit confusing um but it's what it kind of replicates in the end is something sort of similar roughly to something like a, a content analysis, like the themes from a content analysis. So the, what are the themes of a, a, a set of documents? Um, and in this case, the, the, the um, documents that we have, the text that we have, is not ideal. It's not great for what we're doing. Um, and so there, we could do it a couple of ways. One would be to just use the titles as documents. Um, and in that case, the, the like what, um, topic modeling works well for is kind of a lot of documents that are each fairly large. And so what we have are a lot of documents that are very small. You know, the title of a of a post um, or maybe some brief self text. And so it's not great. And so what I've chosen to do is to just create to treat it as three documents: an Ask Reddit document, and a coronavirus, and a politics, and just combine it all into one text. Um, but uh, I don't think that that's, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect. And I, I'll talk in a second about the last exercise, which kind of improves on that. So I am not going to go through 
um, all of this because it's pretty confusing um, and there's a lot going on, but I'm going to try and hit the, the high points. So again, this is using scikit-learn. Uh, we're using the TF-IDF vectorizer as well as the count vectorizer. LDA is a type of topic modeling, kind of the most common and pretty simple. Uh, there are more advanced things going on um, in topic modeling. It's actually a really active area of interest and research um, in computational linguistics. Um, but this is kind of the simplest. So what we do, um, this is definitely overkill and came from kind of this earlier code. So it's, it's kind of timing how long things take. Um, and so what we do is we create the data set. Again, this is uh, we're lists of, of strings. So giant strings, one string for each of the um, subreddits. Okay, so we're going to create a, a vectorizer. So we can we could also use do this using TF-IDF. Um, in fact, maybe that might work better. I think it might take the same. Let's see. Let's try it. Kind of want to see if it works. If it takes in the same things. Okay. Uh, so what it does is, you, what you often want to do, especially if you have a lot of documents, which you hopefully do, is do a few things to ignore uh, both really common words. So if it shows up in 95% of documents, you ignore it. If it only shows up in uh, one document, you ignore it. Uh, you often, so instead of paying attention to every single word, you only use the most common um, but not so common that they are in 95% of documents. You remove stop words. Uh, and this says, so I am uh, using terms of one or two words. So if something is predictive and it's two words, we'll keep it. Okay, so this fits it into, uh, it transforms it into TF-IDF. Uh, and then we run LDA. So this is the topic modeling bit. Uh, we ask how many topics. So this is doing 12, which is actually kind of pointless uh, because we only have three documents. And so each document is going to match really well with one topic. Um, so you really need more documents. This is, to be honest, it's, it's really more of just a, an example of what the code looks like so that you could use it if you wanted um, on your own. Um, so, that's, so that's what that is. It creates a, so um, we're going to use our our TF-IDF to fit using this LDA uh, model that we created. And then this is the transformed model. Um, so this is kind of the, the final version. Um, so we take that and uh, create a kind of make it prettier so that we can look at it. And we're creating this topic distribution, uh, which is which we then make into a data frame. And we also get the we get the feature names and add that to it. So we uh, I then also wrote this to get the top words for each um, name. Anyway, it's it's as you can see, it's pretty involved. It's uh, it's pretty confusing what all is going on. And to be honest, I don't know if you aren't going to be doing topic modeling, I don't think it's uh, worth your time to go into it, but I do want to show you kind of what it does. So I'll run it now. I uh, actually want to see if it works with TF-IDF. Okay, I think that's okay. I think that warning's okay. Um, hmm. No, I don't think, I think this is doing weird things. Let's try it without TF-IDF. I think maybe it's not removing the ones that we wanted it to remove. Let's try it with the count vectorizer and run it. Okay, that looks better. That looks better. Um, I'm not sure what was going on with uh, the TF-IDF. So this is just using term frequency. Um, and these are the, so you can see this is uh, a coronavirus-based topic. So these are the top 20 terms associated. Uh, this one appears to be an uh, Ask Reddit type of topic, and this one appears to be a politics type of topic. So 
Uh, my guess is, I mean, that's, that's kind of the danger of what we've done, is that we had too many topics for the documents. You really need a lot more documents. And so if we look, that's the first data frame shows all of the topics. And then this shows how common they are across each document. Yeah, exactly. So 10, 11, and 7 um, are each uh, common just across those three documents. Yeah. Uh, sorry, my son just came in. Um, OK. Uh, and had a, we resolved it, though. OK. So um, yeah, so that's about it for topic modeling. Um, again, you know, if you're going to do this, you, you want to make this a lot prettier. There's things you can do. And I'm happy to talk with folks that want to do topic modeling. If you, you know, this is kind of the extra credit exercise uh, for those wanting to go above and beyond. If you want to figure out how to do the same thing with a subreddit change my view, I think that'd be much better uh, use of topic modeling. So it has fairly long posts. People explain a controversial view that they hold. So that dot, that self text w is quite long and it's long enough that you could treat it as a document in topic modeling. And so you could get maybe thousands of these uh, or maybe even tens of thousands of different documents from change my view uh, and run a topic model on those. And you might learn interesting things about how people are, um, are representing their views or what types of topics people are using on change my view. So that would be the ideal, something like that would be ideal for topic modeling. Again, uh, this is, thanks for hanging in there. This was a long video. Uh, this is not my uh, forte, but I'm happy to help folks try to navigate this. I know enough to be dangerous, enough to kind of help you to figure out where to look and, and how to navigate it. All right, thanks. Have a great week. See you.